the word is fabulous <laughs> and magnificent. <laughs> Whoa. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs> Aloha to everybody here and everybody online. Welcome. I think Deborah Bear and Ruth are watching, so we say a special hello to them. So welcome to tonight. And we have a few announcements before we, we start. We do. Yeah. Tomorrow night, this has been a very, very busy good. week. We've had something every single night, and it's very cool. On tonight, we have something wonderful. But tomorrow night, we have Elvis, the actual movie that just came out. And it is for our spiritual cinema. So that starts at 6 o'clock tomorrow. And then on Sunday, we have our regular celebration service, which we are starting this whole month with curiosity as our theme. Curiosity. Have you ever dated curiosity? <laughs> it, yeah, that's our Maureen role. has. Maureen <laughs> dated curiosity. And so, and then we have that and a couple of other things. Oh, well, most important thing to know, and for people online that might be watching, not this Sunday, but the Sunday after, we're going to be at Hanamalu Ooh. Ooh. Beach Park with our Sacred Journey um, special celebration with Jeremy it's and Amy playing music. And it's going to be, and well, we ha we'll have directions for you on Sunday if you decide to come, unless you you already know where it is. It was yeah. new to me. I didn't. It I was actually very know. nice to have that new Hi, park to, to, to play in. Hey. Um, so we have that. And then Lolita's game um, afternoon is at 3 o'clock on Sunday. And we have our service. And then afterwards, we're going to wrap with the revs. Yeah. Uh huh. See? Yeah, Do you see how Victoria. She's got rapping. <laughs> Who's rapping? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We call it rap with the revs. So <laughs> we circle up and we have a great time. So I think that's it before we Start. before we go Does into get settled. There's coffee and Sue brought some coffee. The coffee's from Africa, right? And um, the cookies that she brought. So please enjoy the coffee and the cookies. So let's as soon as everybody gets settled, I'm just going to take a moment to do my, my little centering that I like to do before we start. So we're all in this one spirit of love. Oh, let's take a deep breath. Shake off the day. And just be right here and right now. Yeah, shake it off. <laughs> and just getting ready for this beautiful evening with Sue Wood and knowing that that power and presence of love spirit is right where we are and that we're enjoying tonight from that highest place of good. And we all get something very special tonight. And I just know it unfolds perfectly, perfectly, perfectly. As I just affirm, and so it is. So it is. So without further ado, we will introduce Sue Wood. <laughs> She'll tell you all about herself. We were going to do your bio, but we decided to give But I won't give it to him. <laughs> I am not a fool. So I just am so incredibly grateful to each one of you that came tonight and share this little bit of heaven that I got to experience this summer when I went to Uganda. And somebody looked at me and go, why did you go to Uganda? I don't know. It just sounded like a good thing to do. I was invited, and then my soul said, yeah. And it turned out to be one of the most amazing trips I've ever had in my whole life. So I want to share with you, if you start rolling your eyes or nodding off, you know, I'll, I'll let you know, and I'll try to speed it up a little bit, because there's just so much to this trip that I didn't even expect. I didn't know of all the safari and, and the wonderful things that I was going to get to see and do. So, um, Reed and Patrick gave this the title, In and Out of Africa. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I really like that. And it, it was just a fabulous adventure. Um, I started, I left Kauai at 11 o'clock, you know, <laughs> got into LAX at 7 in the morning, spent the rest of the day walking around the Bradley Terminal. Um, of course, I lost my driver's license, got to report that loss, then found it, you know, so I had things to do, important things. Um, then we aborted my friend Nancy Bacon, which you're going to see lots of pictures of her. We boarded a, an Emirates airline, and we flew 15 hours to Dubai. Now, Dubai is a, a Arab country, though 90% of the people living in Dubai are not Arabs. They're very, very wealthy. Um, this is us just checking in. This was a, we got there when the rest of our group showed up, which that's these guys here. We um, 
took a, uh, we had an overnight stay in Dubai, courtesy of Emirates, and then we went on a tour of the city, which after, you know, 20 hours of flying and about eight hours, and I, <laughs> I'd had enough. But we went to the mall. <laughs> this is the aquarium in the mall, and then over here is the ice skating rink. Um, this was a beautiful metal statue. I said this was our first safari animal, but he is. This is a um, dinosaur from Wyoming, a complete real dinosaur in this mall. It was just absolutely beautiful. And in the tour, this is a hotel. It's in the shape of a, of a sail, like on a sailboat. It's um, three to $7,000 a night to stay there. Mm, I didn't stay there. <laughs> obviously. But anyway, we spent the night in Dubai. We got up early the next morning and we flew from Dubai, which is over here, to Entebbe, which is uh, right here in Uganda. And I wanted you to see where Uganda is because I had no clue. Where's Uganda in, in Africa? It's this little landlocked, this is Lake Victoria. And Lake Victoria is the second largest freshwater lake in the world. It's just second only to Lake Superior. It's huge. Um, and this is where we spent our time. The um, equator runs right about through here. So you'll see some pictures. And you saw those on my, the poster out front of me standing in the northern and southern hemisphere of, um, of Uganda. So this is a map, and I've kind of reproduced it over here just so I don't have to keep going back here. The places that are circled in red are all the different places we were. So as you can see, we were all over the country. From Entebbe to down here to Buende is about a nine hour van ride. So I sat a lot. And, and then of course from Kampala to Gulu is a nine or 10 hour ride. We, it was a lot of, we had private drivers and vans. And in fact, we had two vans, one for our luggage and one for us. So I just kind of wanted you to see kind of where we are a little bit there. One of the first things we did is we went to the Entebbe um, Botanical Gardens. This is a all natural research facility. It means nobody's putting chemicals on these trees, nobody's doing anything but letting them grow just like nature wants them to grow and then they study them and how they deal. This is a termite mound. I'm sure you've all seen a termite mound before. <laughs> um, this place is where they filmed um, Johnny Weissmiller in the original Tarzan movies, is right here in the Entebbe Botanical Gardens. Um, these were our friends. We, we had peanuts, little ground nuts, and we just had, there's <laughs> lots of pictures of monkeys. I tried to keep it all down for you. Um, and then this is Peter and his wife, Irene. They put this journey, most of it, together for us. Peter has been um, the leader of Aid Africa, the company that I went with for about 15 years. He's just now stepping down, and, and my friend Nancy is taking over as CEO. And this, he found one of his relatives. <laughs> he was so happy. I think it was his grandson. So then we went to a place called um, Uipo, I think that's how you pronounce it, in Jinja. And Jinja from Entebbe is just right up the road kind of up through it a little bit. Nick, who's part of Trees That Feed. Now, one day I had lunch with Maureen and her friend, Diane Garoni. I hope I said that. Ragoni. Ragoni, okay, who is an expert in breadfruit on this island. I mean, she's world known. And I happened to have lunch with her, and we had conversations about breadfruit and how nutritious it is and how good it would be to feed the world. So this is part of a uh, trees that feed foundation and Nick has been growing plants here and he let me pick out three baby breadfruit trees. I was so excited. It was just like my heart was pounding because I got to introduce to Gulu, which is up here. They've never heard of breadfruit, but I got to bring some breadfruit trees um, and we're going to make arrangements to maybe get more in the future. So anyway, we, Nick and, and was just most generous. He tried to give us sour sop ice cream, but it wasn't ready yet, and we were pretty disappointed about that. So we had to eat mulberry ice cream. Wow. <laughs> I know, you know, I got sad stories here to tell you guys. So one of the, 
really important places we went is, and it's actually called um, Pearls of Africa, Pearl of Africa Children's Home. Now, where did the term Pearl of Africa come? Because anytime you look at Uganda, you're going to see Pearl of Africa. That was Winston Churchill in 1908. And he came to Uganda, and he saw the magnificent animals, the beautiful. It's kind of like Kauai as far as its green and its beauty and its landscape. It's just temperate and beautiful. And so anyway, he called Uganda the Pearl of Africa. So this is a children's home. This lady is Rosette, and she manages this home. This is a pretty nice home. The home they had before was being held up by poles, and she has up to 30 children that live with her, and she takes care of. They're all orphans. They don't have family. They're found on the streets and brought to her, and she gives them a home for life. And uh, this house is pretty nice. Um, it actually had a refrigerator. However, they had no electricity, so <laughs> didn't do much good. I think we took care of, of, of getting the electricity hooked back up for them. But these are the children. And we came in, and they danced for us, and they sang for us, and they hugged us. And oh, my God, my heart just melted at these amazing children. So we took them to the Nile River Park, um, source of the Nile River. Right there. Right there. There's a big concrete platform out there. And that is technically the source of the Nile River. Up above that is Lake Victoria. And that's what feeds. You know, I always thought it was some little stream that went to another stream and another stream made a big river. And I think that's true. But this is <laughs> Lake Victoria that feeds the Nile River. And therefore, this is called the Victoria Nile. And there's the Albert Nile. There are different sections of the Nile River, and you know it all runs up into north into um, Egypt and out into the ocean. So we took the kids. Here this is, um, everybody played. Nobody, there weren't older kids and younger kids. We just all had fun, and we played a little soccer, and we, I didn't. But we're playing some circle games here, and um, somebody's going on the outside, which would have been Rosette. And Rosette has a police case. Rosette has a police case. Blah, blah, blah. Open the door and let her in. She's got a wiggy woggy wiggy wogger on her shoe. Okay. <laughs> Getting the idea? We played. We had just so much fun with these kids. And then Mr. Scott and I one day, before I left, had to find temporary tattoos. <laughs> The kids had a ball. This is one of my favorite pictures. This young man, or here we are putting tattoos on all these kids. Now, this was the first time I got in trouble this day. I got in trouble several times because uh, Peter had intention of interviewing every child and taking their picture for, <laughs> they all look like they had scars. <laughs> so he had to wait a couple of days for these temporary tattoos to fall off before, but as you can see, the kids just had a blast with them. This was our lunch. We took the kids to the lunch. This is a Nile perch, or and um, it's deep fried. You order your food two hours later. They feed you. It was pretty interesting. So anyway, we just had a, a good time. The second time I got in trouble is some of the older girls. We just wanted to take a walk. We were tired. Well, they led me down a golden path, a road, to a little tourist section where they were playing rock and roll music. Well, you know, we had to dance a little bit. <laughs> An hour later, I didn't have my cell phone with me, and nobody could find us. And so by the time we got back, we were <coughs> shoot out. Oh, well. <laughs> It's the way I am. Okay, this is the road to Gulu. We saw all this stuff going on at the side of the road, so our driver uh, stopped. This python was just coming through this banana field and or orchard, or I don't know what you call bananas, whatever, and he, he would just been killed. So we got to go and touch him and feel him, and, and uh, Katharina tried to lift him. He was one heavy snake, you know, he was about, that was the only snake other than in the zoo that I actually saw. And they have many venomous, very, very, very venomous snakes in Uganda. But anyway, we got to play with a python. That's kind of a farmer's market. Most everything's just outside on, on the dirt. Um, that's on the road to Gulu. And Gulu is up here. We're going north now. We're out of 
Entebbe and Jinja, and we're headed north. So this is the home office of Aid Africa. This is Rita's favorite picture. This is Rita's book, <laughs> In Africa, <laughs> which I took with me. Um, every house, every hotel, every place we went had huge walls with a gate, concertina wire all over the top, and a guard with an automatic weapon. It's, I never felt unsafe but they have gone through some horrible times in Uganda in the last 20, 30 years, really horrible times. So everything is very well protected. These are the, some of the people. This is um, Isaias, who leads the Aid Africa group in Africa. And we'll, I'll be showing you the things that this particular group does. And I came with this group, uh, was my purpose for going. Um, one of the reasons, one of the things that Aid Africa does is plants trees. Now, when Idi Amin and the wars and all the things that were going up in Uganda 20 years ago, 30 years ago, they decimated everything. They decimated the animals, they decimated the trees, the soldiers, there were lots of them. So one of the things that Aid Africa does is we, they come in and they plant jackfruit and mango and lemons and limes and fruit trees so that we can give food to these people. One of the things I read is Uganda is one of the poorest nations in the world. And I saw lots of evidence of that. But the happiest, kindest people. Oh my goodness, it was fabulous. So we were walking through, there's a mango tree walking through, just looking at the different thing. And then we came back, this is in a village, we came back to the nursery. Um, last year they gave something like 40,000 trees two different villages in the area. And here we are planting the baby breadfruit. We planted three of them in about three years. They should possibly begin, and I gotta learn what to do with breadfruit <laughs> before I go back to, to teach them what to do. Another thing they do is they build rocket stoves. Now these rocket stoves, and I'll show you what they look like, are handmade. Um, it'll start here with a big hole in the ground and in that ground is sawdust, is clay, and water. And then two or three men with shovels and boots, or not, barefoot, are out mixing that in this big hole in the ground. Now you see the water hose coming here. This is me pumping water from the creek, which is down the road. And that's kind of like a little bicycle thing. You just pump, 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 and then that water comes out of here, comes up into here, and, um, and then they are fired. And this, you know, the bricks are fired to a certain degree because these rocket stoves, different sections of them have to be exactly perfect to be the efficient stoves that they are. And then they store them. One day we went to a village, and I think close to two, three hundred people showed up. They all sit down under the big, and you don't say, oh, we're going to meet you at 3 o'clock on, you know, on Easy Street. We're going to meet by the big mango. So we all met by the big mango tree, and Isaac gave a demonstration. Up here you can see these, this look kind of round. Those are the bricks that the guys were making on this slide before. And then they're wired together. On the other side is just a little hole, and I'll show you in a minute what that was all for. Then the villagers make their own bricks because all their houses are made out of their own bricks. Um, they surround it with this and then they start building mud over the top and they will put a, uh, um, Isaac's holding a circular um, cage kind of where their pots can fit in and large pots and small pots can both fit in. They're extremely well designed, extremely efficient. And then we helped, we helped get them to this point with the wires and then the villagers took them home. And I love this woman. I just thought she was so beautiful and elegant, taking them home to finish th the process. Once they take them home and put them in their homes, these don't smoke. They don't fill their huts up with, with smoke because they're so efficient by their design. And then they'll all get a GPS tag so Aid Africa knows where every stove is. They go back, they check them, they make sure they're properly set up, that they're properly working, and they help the people. So 
they plant trees, they build and give away rocket stoves and maintain them. Um, this is a sweet lady, this is her rocket stove. Can you see how she's mudded it up and you can see the flame under there? She's, she's cooking her beans or whatever she's cooking for dinner. This is a typical hut, door is about this high. <laughs> Even I had to duck to get in and out, um, all thatched roof. And then these are two different kinds of hoes. And some of our employees were showing that their village liked this hoe and the other one liked that hoe. And so they were cleaning up the, <laughs> the ground for us, showing us how it was done. Commercially, this is the hospital um, in Gulu. Families come and cook for their families that are in the hospital. So this lady was here, and you can see that these are rocket stoves, and then they went this wall and down this wall. So they just come and cook their food for their families, and then come over here and clean up their dishes when they're done. It's a little different than ours. On the other side of this building were stoves that were similar, but they were burning charcoal. It was just, you could hardly breathe. Uh, and it takes many, many, many more trees than this. Yes, Roseanne? It's, it's wood. It's wood. One of the trees, uh, they don't just plant fruit trees. One of the trees they plant are trees that you can just cut the limbs off, which are, you can see how the small, actually the sm holes are a little bit smaller than this on the ha household ones. It just takes a little piece of wood. And because it's so efficient, you don't have to cut down the whole tree. You can just cut off a limb and it'll regrow and come back. So just an amazing. Um, so water. This is where a lot of the villagers get their water. Same cows drink out of that, pigs, whatever's in the area. They clear the debris, scoop it up, put it in their jerry cans. Or this is a lady that, and I want to tell you a little bit about her. I'll try to remember her name in a minute. But she's stepping down into a hole where she has to go down and get water and put it in. Malaria, uh, all kinds of mosquitoes. This is not a healthy way to drink water. So what Aid Africa does is they drill wells. Now, for $35,000, and if any of you have an extra couple dollars left around, we could buy a machine that could draw all this, but at the moment, they don't have $35,000. So there's a big tripod that's set up. On here are these men, and there's a kind of a, a rope that comes up over a pulley. As these guys are pulling back and let down, these guys are pounding. And that's Solomon. When I saw the muscles on this man, I just went, oh my gosh, is that even possible? But that's what he does. Pound, pound, pound. Down into the ground. This is the pipe they pulled out of the ground because they needed to add an extension to it. So you can see how far they're going down to get water, which they did hit water. Once they, pull, they finish this process, they'll put a casing in. Then they'll build a concrete, uh, it's probably four or five feet across uh, with a drain that goes out and a pump. The water is absolutely clean. It's beautiful, it's clean. So instead of what their goal is for somebody to only have to walk a half a mile to get clean water instead of a mile carrying a five gallon jerry can and having your little kids have a baby jerry can so that you have water for your family, they don't have it. So anyway, that's one of the things that Aid Africa does. Um, this is another type of well. Here's Nancy pumping the well. This is a spring. So what they've done is they've, the hydrologist has found the water source. They've protected it with a fence because it's out in the open from cattle and whatever. And then fresh water just flows out. So another s source reason for, um, the other thing, and this was kind of a tough day because we went way, way, way far out. Um, and this was a health clinic. Now, Aid Africa doesn't give any health things, but we did transport medical people. And they talked to the people about cleaning up the village, about, um, about HIV, 
about staying with the same partner. They talked to them about spousal abuse, alcoholism. They tested them for malaria, for HIV. If you had malaria, they gave you medicine. HIV, you, went, you had counseling. They talked to them about birth control. They gave vaccinations to the babies and the, and the adults that needed to be there. So we, and this is the, the farmer's market. <laughs> this was market day. So out on the street, you could go and, and buy whatever you need, or you could buy. Some of these children just, I love these three. They, all these three little boys had these matching outfits on that I don't know how they got them, but they were absolutely gorgeous. This little girl was just, she kind of was everywhere. She was just so sweet. And we're teaching them how to play hokey pokey. <laughs> they never played hokey pokey. We taught them hokey pokey. So we spent the whole day here. At the end of the day, we were exhausted. I'd eaten corn from the field um, that had been kind of heated. <laughs> but yes? Um, they, um, not, the yeah, I'm oh, sorry, I'm sorry. yeah, oh, the, yeah. did they have treatment for HIV? Yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> but not in this environment, they would recommend them to, to more medical um, groups. Um, they do, um, I was talking to um, Isaac one day about during COVID, nobody went to school. Nobody worked unless you were in agriculture. Nobody. So uh, a lot of the young ladies got pregnant. Well, what did they do? Well, they dropped out of school when they could go back. They couldn't go back to school with a baby. They had to go home and live with their parents. They could not be given or sold to any other person during their pregnancy just to get them out of the house. And if a woman has an abortion in Uganda, she goes to prison for life. Little different than, <laughs> than what ours are. But yet... Nobody was upset. Everybody was, these were such lovely, lovely, lovely people. So those are the four things that Aid Africa does. One of the things I, I forgot to tell you is that there was a young man that was, being, was playing football, soccer, dislocated his shoulder. So we gave him a ride in the van to the hospital, which was a two-hour ride. He didn't whimper. He was probably 14, 15 years old with his dad. Didn't whimper. He took him to the hospital. He had two broken bones and a dislocated shoulder. <coughs> they found a ride home on a boda boda. A boda boda is a motorcycle. And if not, they would have walked for two days to get back to their village. Very isolated, very, um, but wonderful people. So we went to the mall. And um, this is kind of the individual shops of the mall. <laughs> There was no Armani. <laughs> there was no, it just, and one of the most interesting things, I don't know if you can tell, this is all dried fish. So that section was a little ripe, a little bit ripe. Um, I hired someone, a tailor, Brenda, to make me a dress. So Brenda made me a dress. You can see this is her shop. She was upstairs. She's on the floor cutting it out. All the machines, I saw a couple machines that were electric, but most everything was the old treadle, including the sergers, which do the sides. They were all treadle. So, I know, I know, I know. We aren't even going to go that direction. I bought, a, well, it was, I bought a few yards of material and just she. Sue, if they're going to ask questions, yeah. could you repeat the question? So yes, that yes. Um, so your question was, did she have a couple, yeah, so she just kind of sewed it together. And um, we came back and Katarina, who she's a young um, woman from Croatia, who was on our trip with us, she just graduated Cal Poly, and they were designing a solar uh, slow cooker. So you'd put something outside in a pot, and it would cook all day long 
using just solar energy. And they left our, we kind of separated our group later and she went to port something and um, there was one being used to see how well. They used to cook at, at Cal Poly, they'd cook lunch every day <laughs> for students. So anyway, she and I modeled our dresses and um, where's my clicker? down. So we had a couple of fun nights. This is a Chole concert. Um, and the concert started at 8, 10. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. So this is a courtship dance. It's no wonder there's so many people in. Woohoo! Beautiful, beautiful, but it's a male, it's a, it's a regular Chole a courtship dance. These girls very much Tahitian moves, you know, they could just really with the hips, and while we were waiting from eight to 10, uh, we drank Nile beer and played pool. <laughs> so we, we had some fun nights where we just played. Um, and then this was the highlight of the Aid Africa Day. We played soccer. Now, Katharina um, was also a soccer player. So, I mean, they just were chomping at the bit till the hour of the soccer player game. And you can see this is the field, this is the line, which we had to shoo the chickens out of the way. I was over here in the cheerleader section, um, but they had a ball, just had a ball. We, it was probably one of the best community-making days that we had um, as a group. So, safari, whoa. We, um, I didn't know we were going to have such an amazing safari experience. This guy is a very old giraffe. This is a wound on his neck because they fight with their necks. So that's a very old wound on him. Um, I'll tell you about him in a minute because I don't even like him. Uh, yeah, gorillas, zebras. It was just... So we... The first place we went was to Murchison Falls, and we had this safari van that the whole t top, so most of the time I was standing in the seats looking outside of the top. Um, this was our driver, Ken, and this is Nancy. Nancy uh, Bacon is a good friend of my daughter. She's the one who invited me on the trip. She is currently the CEO of Aid Africa. Uh, she's kind of between my age and my daughter's age, and we just, I've never, um, not, not never, I've had many, but we had an amazing, no conflict whatsoever at any time trip. Dance? Oh yeah, well, but that wasn't from Nancy, that was, fr that was from um, Peter. So the first thing we did is we took a cruise. Yeah, sorry, sorry, I forget that. We took a Nile River cruise. <coughs> Murchison File Falls is right on the edge of the Nile River, which it's right up in here, right by Lake Albert. Um, so, but we're here on the Victoria Nile River. This was a beautiful little family of elephants. We're out here in the little boat. You can see the framework of it. And this guy went, hmm, who are these people? As he got closer, and Katarina's up here, he started flapping those ears, trumpeting, <laughs> and charging us. So uh, we backed out of there very quickly. He was not happy with us at all. Oh, well, I'll show you in a minute. If she's asking where the one there that I didn't like. Well, I'll tell you in a minute. These are hippopotamus. Uh, families of them, and um, apparently more people are killed by hippopotamus than uh, elephants or anything else because they're fast and big and dangerous. And what do you see up in the top corner? You got it, Scott. It's a crocodile. Yeah, can you see him? He goes from here over to here. Yeah, yeah. He was just up on the bank having a little sun bath. So... We didn't get too close. This is a fishing eagle right here. Um, these are Cape buffalo. Um, herds of, oh, oops. <laughs> there, I, I don't drink beer, guys. But on the Nile River, you gotta drink a Nile beer. Come on. I had a few. 
Um, yeah, so we took this boat all the way up to this island, but we couldn't go any further, and this is Murchison Falls. Doesn't look too impressive. I didn't think it was too impressive. But on the way back, I got to drive the boat. <laughs> we all did. We just, we had a wonderful time. And then we stopped and had lunch. Now, these are the thieves of the world. Do not leave your purse, your backpack, your window open because they will come in looking for food and your backpack will disappear. My friend Nancy's seen numerous backpacks just <coughs> never to be seen again. So the big baboon, these are the little huts we stayed in that night. This guy's walking, and there was another one, two elephants are <laughs> right there. They're big, huge, massive. And this, of course, is the, the Nile River. The next day, we got up and did a land cruise. And you can see herds of elephant, giraffe. Oh, my gosh. It just The thing that was so amazing to me is that when the armies were parked here, they decimated the trees. They decimated all the animals. There were very few animals that weren't killed and eaten during the time of, of the wars in, in Uganda. But that was a, some kind of a scavenger bird up there, I don't know, monkeys. Uh, this is a uh, heart, heartbeat? Heart. Thank you, thank you. Um, more Cape buffalo, more critters, just they were just everywhere. It, it, the, so the good thing is, is that they were all replenishing, all coming back. Okay, now we're at Lake Albert, and this is Isaac. We're looking at some beautiful, this is a crested crane. He's also called now a gray crane, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful bird. This is a family of warthogs. Let me see if I have, no. Um, now, the problem with these warthogs, and we saw lots of warthogs out in the bush, but the problem with these guys is that people were feeding them. So one day, I don't think it was him, but it was one about that size. He's about from here to Scott in front of me, and I'm going to take his picture, <laughs> and I have no food. <laughs> so he charges me. Fortunately, I jumped out of the way quick enough, and no harm, no foul. But I went, oh, well, you're not my best friend anymore. So this is Murchison Falls. <laughs> this is the Nile River flowing over. It was, I'm standing here, and I am drenched. The, the power of the water coming back up that canyon, and it just, and then <laughs> we climbed up to the top, which is over here, and we're just in the mist. We're all out there just enjoying the rain and the getting all wet. And this is the group that traveled together, including our driver, Ken. And this is Isaac, who works for Aid Africa. Um, and this is our group here. <sighs> it was a small group. It was an amazing group. These falls, they're talking about making a power source out of them, which would make me sad to have them dam up any part of this. But... Who knows, the Chinese are, have found oil in Murchison Falls Park. They're building beautiful freeways. And you know the next story. Um, they'll start damming. So this is the sunset on the Nile River. It was really that red. It was just, I went, how can the sun and its reflection be that amazing and beautiful? <sighs> yes. So... Next, we went, okay, Patrick, you got to say it. Makuta. I can't say that. Anyway, that's what's written across the building here. <laughs> we were at the Ziwa uh, Rhino Preserve. And um, as you can see, we all had to don uh, mud boots because we were going out in the fields where we saw these beautiful animals. Um, 20 years ago, the last rhinoceros in Uganda was poached and killed. Um, zoos from around the world contributed a small herd. Um, the fun story is, is that the, uh, the rhino from America, America sent a rhino, and the rhino from Kenya fell in love. Guess what their baby's name is? Obama. <laughs> <laughs> so it 
was great. So we trekked out. We went out in the bush and watched them quite at a distance because they're big and very powerful animals. The next morning when we got up, these guys were in our camp. They were s this is where we're supposed to have breakfast. This is where our house is. Three of them are out here sound asleep. <laughs> so we finally, they finally, Moja, who is a massive bull, he's just huge. He finally got up and they all eventually wandered away and, and we got to come and have breakfast. So I'm not sure why I put that back in there. Oh, I know, because we went to Kampala. Don't go to Kampala. <laughs> it's the capital city. This is a street map. <laughs> it just, I went, I, I asked Ken, I said, why did you bring us to Kampala? And he goes, well, you need to have the Kampala experience. I go, okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. It was crazy. These are kind of how the streets look. The Boda Boda, the motorcycle, are the Ubers uh, and taxi service. There might be, I had to take this. It was pouring down rain the day. But this guy has 10 boxes on the back of his bike going through the rain, through traffic. I mean, the Kapa'a crawl is heaven. <laughs> People and tourists, I mean, excuse me, pedestrians have no right of way. Lots of pedestrians are hit by either the Boda Bodas or... Um, but these guys, a lot of them uh, don't have work. They somehow get a boda boda, and they may have a whole family on them. Uh, but it's kind of the Uber system, and most everybody rides them in Uganda. I did not, because um, I didn't have that kind of courage. So, so now, in Kampala, Nancy and I left the group. And the rest of the group went over to port whatever it was. Um, and um, they had, and then we went back to Gulu to finish some more business up there. Uh, and Nancy and I went off on our own. And as you can see, we're here. Uh, that's our driver, um, Chris. We stopped on the equator. And I've got other pictures. You've seen them with me of my foot. And, and I have one that I kind of hesitate to put out because it looks like I'm God going, <laughs> I give you the world, <laughs> north and south. So we didn't stop at the zebra preserve, but they just fortunately came up on the road and said, hi, you want to take our pictures? This is a little baby, not very old. Um, and then we went to Buendi. Now, I didn't realize, I thought Buendi was a little spot on the map. It's a huge preserve for the mountain gorillas. Um, these women came out, and I'm sorry, I don't know how to put a video in here, but these women danced, jumping up and down, over and up and down for 30 minutes, I, the energy, and sang to us and played drums for us and just put on. And then we had someone that kind of dressed in a gorilla, kind of just <laughs> crawled <laughs> crawled through. That it was an amazing performance. It's, of course, it's a different um, tribe. So not the Otoli, which we re had up in, in, and I can't tell you what. Cause <laughs> so here we are. We're going gorilla trekking. <laughs> One of the highlights of my trip. As you can see, we start off in this beautiful path. Just lovely, lovely, lovely. This is a group. There were groups of 16 that went out. There were different sections where gorillas had been spotted. They kind of sent us to the old lady section, I think. <laughs> you know, the not, they, they were closer by, um, that's what I thought. All of these people were Indian, uh, some lived in, L in London, they're all family, and some lived in um, uh, India. But, now here's my word, impenetrable. That's, this is the Bwindi impenetrable forest. That trail was just for tourists. This is what we started to go through, and this is one of our, our guards or rangers. They all had automatic weapons to a, protect us because these are wild animals. Um, and But they, he's got a machete in his hand. He's cutting the trail. Now, Nancy and I, and we hired a porter. I have never held anybody's hand this long or this tight <laughs> because you didn't know what was under your feet. There was just... A, the debris from them chopping. And yeah, things did slip a little bit <coughs> and slide. And, and I had my walking stick and that helped. And then we got, we found mama and her baby. 
Oh my gosh. This is where I really wished I could have done a video for you because this little guy is hanging on branches and he's got a leaf down here in his foot and he's playing with and he's on mom's head and and he's just it was just so 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 sweet um we all had to wear masks so that we didn't um here's here he is here's the baby playing in a tree and there's another shot of the baby and mom carrying him on her back <coughs> where's the big silver back there's always a big silver back well, he's in the bushes just over here. He's kind of rattling around. And I can see his face, but I can't get a picture of him. Well, the day before the rangers had been out, he had been coughing and wasn't feeling well. So they treated him. Um, he was a little bit cranky. <laughs> so he had enough of us, and he went tearing off through the forest. Well... Nancy and I and one other brave soul and a couple of the rangers went tearing off after him. And down the mountain we went, hack, hack, hack. We found him again. He's kind of behind the bushes again. And he starts big gorilla sounds. And I went, you know, I think I've had enough. <laughs> so back out we came. We never really got to, you know, and then normally we would get to be with the, the big silver back. But he was there. So, yes. Did you wear a mask to protect yourselves or to protect them? To protect them, yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, to protect them. So this was a beautiful, um, probably you'll never get this experience. Now, it was exhausting. I got way overheated as we're climbing out because you can only spend one, if you even find them, you can only spend one hour with them, max. And then you had to climb out while well, starting to get warm. I did kind of overheat a little bit and had to, I was kind of slow on the way out. But then we made it up to the top where we had lunch and got cooled down. And um, they told us when the, when the tour started, you know, in our little explanation, that if somebody got hurt, because it's, it's not easy hiking, uh, they would send the African helicopter. Well, that's it. <laughs> so this lady fell down, dislocated her shoulder. It happens to her regularly, so her husband popped it back in. It popped back out. He couldn't fix it. So we had to call for the African <laughs> helicopter. So these guys came running down the mountains. It took them a while, and then they transported her up the hill and back down to base camp. Um, Nancy and I... I am an official gorilla tracker. I have proof. <laughs> so it was, yes, it was probably one of the hardest hikes I've done in a long time. And, but you know, where can you do that in Kauai? So now Nancy and I go to, uh, from Windy, we come back up here to Entebbe. And that was my final um, destination was Entebbe. And one of the fun things we did was a behind-the-scenes tour of the local zoo. And it wasn't a huge zoo, but it was well done, and, and we enjoyed it. So here I am looking at a rhinoceros. Now, pretty safe, right? I'm kind of brave. Look how brave I get here. Uh-huh. And here, full-on touching. Oh, yeah? Well, watch this. Completely out of control. <laughs> <laughs> First kiss of a rhinoceros. So, um, <laughs> somebody looked at me and they go, why would you kiss a rhinoceros? I go, well, have you? <laughs> have you? No, nobody but me. And Nancy, Nancy, Nancy did too. So, these are the lions. This is the, the lion. He has a whole pride of females. Um, this is a brother and sister and their, and their mother is there. None of them can go out into the field with these guys at the same time. The mother doesn't get along with the other females, so she's pretty much in isolation forever because they will kill her. This is the next king of the beast. Of this, and this is his sister. They will actually breed the brother and sister. And eventually, he will take over. But this guy was just, and this little gal was just teasing him. She was shameless, absolutely shameless. And then we got to feed the giraffe. Oh, I mean, look how tall these guys are. They're just, 
massively tall. So we got to feed him. I'm, I'm pretty unhappy doing that, you can see. This whole trip, I'm unhappy. Um, especially when I got to feed two at once. Yeah, yeah. And this is just, I mean, I was in love with the rhino. I'm kind of in love here again, too. Um, how many of you seen a shoe bill? This, <laughs> this is the official national bird of Uganda. Um, they're kind of rare to even see. And this guy, of course, is, is people friendly. They do bite. They have a little, like a tooth out here. They do bite a little bit, so you kind of had to watch him. But yeah, it's a shoe bill. Yes. What you were feeding the... Hmm. What was I feeding them? Yes. Um, we weren't actually feeding them. The we were just... Oh, the giraffe? Uh, just grain. Just grain, yeah. Um, some kind of pellets. Yeah. And, uh, giraffe food. Giraffe food, yeah. <laughs> From Safeway. <laughs> yeah. So he was fun. He was fun. He is such a strange bird. And then... Uh, we had to do a spa day. I mean, I know, I know, F four hour spa day, and it was probably one of the nicest, you know, facials, coffee scrubs, yeah. And then when we got home, we were staying at this bed and breakfast, and Anna, who was absolutely fabulous, every day she made us fresh fruit, the pineapple, the mango, the oh, watermelon was just Oh, makes my mouth salivate just how fresh and wonderful. And every morning she cooked us breakfast. When we came home from our spa, she set up a little table outside and had us a glass of wine. And we were just treated, drove us any place we wanted to go and just treated wonderfully. So then we took a trip out to Chimpanzee Island. Now, Chimpanzee Island is out here in the Sese Islands. So we're, we're taking a boat ride out into Lake Victoria. This is a Jane Goodall facility. These are all rescue chimps. Um, they will never leave the island. Have they had babies there? Only because some of these chimps are so smart that they dig their birth control chips out. Uh-huh. There's one that's, these are electric wires. There's one that's so smart that she figured she could put a stick in there and get out, she could escape. And if she got two sticks, her friend could escape with her. They're 97.4% human <laughs> and very, very sharp. This is Sunday. Now, Sunday was raised in a, the zoo and sold. Um, he ended up in Moscow in a circus where eventually, as he got older, um, you know, didn't want to do all the things and they prodded him with electric posts and you know he wasn't treated wonderfully so eventually he woke up one morning and he had been castrated uh ugandan government <coughs> heard about it found out about it <coughs> excuse me and demanded that he be returned from moscow and he was and now he grew much taller because of the castration than the and he doesn't really fit in with the other males because he's not you know, but they don't reject him, but he's kind of the grandpa. He takes care of all the little ones and teaches them, and he's just an, an amazing. One day, he, th there's this little section here that's got the wire, and at night, they all have a big pins that they can go in because they can be safe because it's a big, I don't know how many acres that they get to roam freely during the day. They feed them, and they throw them from a... a fruits and veggies and things twice a day. So they're fed. They don't have to forage completely on their own. They are fed. Um, and that's why we were here. We were here to watch them be fed. But anyway, he didn't want to come into the pen one night. And he went out, and he's on the edge, of, and he sees a couple of fishermen. And they see him and freak out. And they leave their boat. So he goes and gets in the boat because he's seen fishermen in a boat before. <laughs> but he doesn't realize... It doesn't just stay at shore. So he's found several days later floating out in Lake Victoria. <laughs> and he was very happy to see his human friends when they found him. <coughs> but he, there's a little book over here that I have. Uh, it's all about Sunday and his story. And, and uh, what are he, he just has some amazing adventures because they're very, very, very smart animals. Whoa, what was that? Okay. <coughs> and this is my last slide. 
this is goodbye to my friends. This is back at the Entebbe Botanical Gardens. And we had, uh, you can see my, my, my blue manicure. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so we came, we just took a few pictures of some of the babies, and we just spent some time saying goodbye to the babies and the mamas and feeding the monkeys in the garden. So that was my trip to Africa. So, <laughs> do I have any questions? Well, uh, I'm astounded. It, it's fascinating. Yeah, thank you. Um, so how did you hook up with this group? I mean, did you just <laughs> um, see an ad in the newspaper? <laughs> how? No. And, and I am in Bakersfield with my family. And uh, Nancy Bacon, who was also a UCC minister and a family and marriage uh, therapist for many years, just an amazing woman. She's one of my daughter's best friends. And because I had been to Guatemala a couple of times and other places doing little humanitarian things, she looked at me about two years ago and said, Sue, would you like to join us? We can't go now because of COVID. And I said, sure. I really, I, that attracts, that feels right to me. So that's how I got. And Nancy and I are still good friends. So is this a small humanitarian group or is it like huge? No. And how are they funded? And they're funded by people like you and me sending donations. Um, there's going to be a fundraiser in L.A., uh, next month, um, it is a small group, mostly based out of Bakersfield. Uh, the, the original man, Ken Goyer, 15, 20 years ago, came into Uganda when people were living in the refugee camps, and it was horrendous conditions. Just, you know, everybody's smoke everywhere, poop everywhere, you know, horrible, horrible conditions. These people were living there. The armies would come through. One thing I didn't tell you, and I'd like to tell you this. The armies would come through and steal the boys and make soldiers out of them, steal the girls and make wives for the soldiers. Now, they were legally married because they couldn't commit adultery. <coughs> and, and so where, here I have a cough drop. And if the girls weren't pretty, and they're very young, they're children. These are children that are being stolen. If they were ugly, they were pushed off a cliff for the crocodiles. That's the conditions that Ken came in and he said, what can I do? You can't change the politics, you can't change the war, but what can I do? So he started working with the stoves, with the clean water, with these little things that you could go out and be of some benefit without coming in and trying to change the world. So Ken died. Um, and um, a man named Peter, who lives in San Luis Obispo now, and his wife took it over. And they've been going for 15 years, and they set up the nonprofit. They've set up, um, they get carbon credits. Their stoves are so efficient that they get carbon credits, which could be, you know, sold. So they're, they're doing a good job, but they're doing, what can we, this is still up in that gulu, that, area of the the wars and the refugee camps so that's kind of how it got started and it's just they do trips for people like me to see what's really going on elsewhere and how what can I do what can I do yeah Go ahead. um UCC is that what is um uh, it's the United Church of Christ okay yeah, yeah. and so this um is affiliated with the church or there was just Not people that went no. Strictly a nonprofit humanitarian group. And who invented this um, stove? This the employees of the um, Aid Africa. So they just figured it out. Mm -hmm. um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're and they and they try it out, and as it gets better, they've got a new one. That's, this is a five brick stove. They've got a new one coming out that's a three brick stove that's even more efficient um, and less decimating to the forest so yeah and um somebody back oh yeah amber did you have uh any kind of feeling were th uh was it a muslim group uh, or was there any religious or this is their own religion in that of that tribe i the 
there were there were a lot of Pentecostal churches that uh-huh. I saw in the cities, so there was a lot of Christian influence there. Um, but I didn't see a lot of Catholic or Muslim, though there were Catholics and Muslim. It wasn't anything predominant. It just, yeah. One and of the shocking things, I mean, I've only been to Africa once, but one of the shocking things with the women for me is that the husbands, let's say a, a relative or somebody would come into the village, and they, as a gift, they would give one of their yeah. wives to whoever was the visitor yeah. and um like you say of course um i mean there wasn't a chance of birth control that kind of thing um so do you feel that now um the women are taking charge of their own bodies or i mean the women's uh, plight is is quite scary over there it, it, it was. is I and don't know now. i can't say because i had such limited um, I didn't find, and no one talked that way. There were things like during COVID, if you were out past curfew, you could either be caned or shot. You know, they're pretty serious about these are the rules and you will obey them. But I didn't, um, other than going to prison for life, if you had an abortion, if a woman has a brand new baby or a child and the husband needs fed, he gets fed first. So there's still some of that. Um, that I saw, but I didn't see, um, you know, wife swapping and all that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah, so. You know, it's, it's interesting. I was telling Ron, I was sitting next to him, and I said, and I hardly ever use this, but I went, wow, we're so spoiled. Yeah. And, and I mean, and that's what I just love about these kind of things, you go, going over there and doing that type of work and with such joy, Sue. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, you know, it wasn't like, I mean, you had one spa day, for God's sake. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, but the yeah. rest of it was, but somebody who's growing older, I mean, growing more mature, like myself, I do have a most important question. Where did you go to the bathroom? Oh, I don't have the picture. Most <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I didn't think you, I needed to see it. You it could. <laughs> Ask them to take my picture. <laughs> no, um, you could bush pee, of course. In the hotels, they had flushing yeah, yeah, toilets. Yeah, yeah, right. um, but you were out. In but the mostly, place. they were a porcelain or concrete uh, shelf in the. Oh, thank you. Um, that had a hole in it, and you just kind of squatted. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true in e- in Egypt too. Uh, a lot of the countries. It, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a lot of countries are that way. So, there was one place in the village where we took the. Oh. Where, we t- where we took the medical people, I had to <laughs> had to go to the bathroom. So they got the key because there was a locked facility. But the um, village elder walked in and said, "No, <laughs> you cannot go in here. It was so filthy." So we drove up the road, <laughs> and <laughs> I found a tree. And the driver went on up the road and came back and got me. And it's, I'm just kind of walking on the road, and these people are kind of. <laughs> in, in the village where we did the trees came out and we were getting ready to get in the vans and go home <laughs> and this poor little baby she took a look at my white face my white hair my blue eyes and just freaked out <laughs> <laughs> most of the children are okay and if you'd wave at them and smile they, but this baby had never seen anything like me before <laughs> so I did upset a child. <laughs> did you have a question? Sharon, hold yeah. on. Sharon, okay. Thank you. Uh, two things. I uh, want to know about, oh, goodness, this is what happens when you mature. <laughs> you, for, <laughs> yeah. you forget. But one of the questions, oh, that water that they that you were showing in the early part of the pre- presentation. Mm-hmm. The hole? Well, that, that muddy water, did they actually drink that? That was all they had. And that's and what a lot of those villages still, that, and they may have to walk five miles I understand. with a jerry can. But they actually did drink that water yeah. as was. And bathed in it and cooked in it and everything in it. In the, in the hut, mm-hmm. gosh, I, just, I didn't want to bore you with 10 zillion pictures, but, oh, um, you know, there was the, thank God for the rocket stoves because there was, a, there was one lady that had her wood tied on the inside. She was very smart. But there's not much there, just a dirt mm-hmm. floor. Mm-hmm. There's no electricity. A couple people had s- very small solar panels to charge their cell phones, really. Uh. But, you know, but for the most part, no. You had to walk. The children all walked mm-hmm. to school. 
miles. So that was the other question I wanted to ask. What, what did you get any sense of the education system? Um, to get a good education, you have to do private school. Mm -hmm. One of the employees of Aid Africa <coughs> has four children. Um, they have to have uniforms, they have to have books, and probably pay some tuition to get out of the public school system. Only three of his children can go to school because he can't afford the, th the fourth child to go to school. Yeah. So, and these children yeah, out in the villages, they walk for miles and, um, yeah, get the best they can. Of course, they play soccer, <laughs> so life is good. They all play soccer, so... Anybody else? Yeah. You know, girls, of course, are second class, but how long can they go to the sixth grade? Can they go to the ninth grade? No, they can, they can go All um, the way quite a ways if they have the finances. Um, there's a little girl that Ken Goyer um, found on the streets and kind of adopted. She's been like a poster child for Aid Africa. She's 28 now, so it's, she's past that stage. Um, but she made it up through high school and, and a couple years of colleges, and then she kind of wasn't doing well, and she's been forced out of the nest now, and so she's back in Kampala going back to school. She really wanted to come to America and get a master's degree in sociology or something like that, but you know, you can't just come to America. You got to make some some plans. So, um, yeah, there's there's education. Uh, birth control is readily available to anybody and everybody. Um, um, yeah, so, that's Pat great. Um, is there's something on the back of these chairs? Oh, thank know. you. Yeah. So I brought back some. Uh, you've probably all seen these. They're called paper beads. And in Africa, they take a magazine, cut it into a diamond shape, roll it up, and shellac it. So on the back of all your chairs is a little ticket. And I'd like to share some of my... There, it's actually at the top of the chair. It, yeah, it's right glued to the your back of your shoulder chair. blades. Um, I'm also... You can just rip them off. I'm also going to give away 50,000 shillings. 50,000. Thousand shillings. This is put it my, in the basket, sister. Put it in the basket. <laughs> <laughs> I love this because it has a gorilla on the back. That fifty thousand shillings is maybe eh, fifteen twenty dollars at the most. Yeah. If you got the bank and the ATM, you might have to get a million shillings out to get a couple hundred bucks. It's you know it's quite crazy. Oh uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I've got some earrings. I've got some cards. And this. Will you unzip that for me? Fifty thousand. I mean, Sue Wood is generous. Okay, this is a shopping bag. Yeah, uh, and then it folds back up <laughs> into <luck>. it zippers <laughs> into a little one. So these are just some fun things I brought back. Um, so I'm just gonna draw some, and um, we'll start with some paper beads. And let's see. And then we've got some chairs that don't have anything. Um, Eight one five seven two. Woo! Hey. All right. I believe that's what it says. Yeah. All right. Because I've got the one yeah. next to you. Oh yeah, that's kind of in order. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, now we're gonna do a colorful one. Maybe Rita yeah. will be your lovely assistant and help you. Out. Yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> what did she say? <laughs> Okay, we're going to go over here. Vanna. To <laughs> 81574. <laughs> that one, that didn't go. Oh, good, Julita. I can borrow it. <coughs> they are made out of paper. Last time I, That's great. I went, they... Um, um, so now I have some little... Um, Thank you. These are just little note cards that I like. They're little hand-drawn note cards. <coughs> 81577. Yay! There she is. See, aren't you glad you came? <laughs> okay. Now, my, I, I just love this. I don't know why. <laughs> we'll use it to get your attention here. So, all right. And that one is 81571. 
Wow, I gotta get past. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, and let's do a bracelet. <laughs> Uh, eight one five eight oh. Oh, dun dun dun. Oh, okay. Now we're going for the biggie. Uh -huh. Are you guys paying attention? Fifty thousand. How showing. much is it worth? About ten bucks. <laughs> now about fifteen dollars. <laughs> eight one five eight eight. There Woo! she is. Okay, let's go for another necklace. Rita? Yes. Okay. <laughs> 81587. Yay! Let's see, we'll find somebody that likes a shorter necklace. I kind of like the shorter ones. All right, we'll see if we can call your number. All right. 81569. It is? <laughs> oh. That's manifesting. <laughs> wow. All right. We have a psychic in the room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and get it. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, uh, All right. Exactly. Our Here philosophy. Exactly. Another necklace. Eight one five eight two. Woo Woohoo. Yeah. Okay. Now I have um Let's do a pair of earrings. Hang on. Scott, I'll get this. <laughs> All right. Let me separate those from that one. I can't get that one off. Okay. 81581. Louise, you're going to look so lovely. So lovely. <laughs> All right. It's okay. I've got another pair of earrings. Let's see if we can get them to Scott. Christmas is coming, Louis. <laughs> 81567 or 87? What does that say? 81567. Eight, no, All right. Let's try that. Yeah, 81567. Seven. Oh, I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I've got about four more bracelets. Let's go for it. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. 81576. Oh, yes. All right. <laughs> Let's do the entire Fraser family, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> 81586. Ooh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> that worked out well. 81570. That was right here. Oh, okay. We'll pull another one. Close, though. Good try, Maureen. 81583. Oh, another space. All okay. right. Yeah. See, those people would be sorry they didn't show up. 81589. Whoa, Giorgio. All right. Giorgio. This one's almost a children's size. And 81588. Again? How could How'd you it get be? two? You only get one. <laughs> What, did, was there really two on your seat? Well, you gotta trace it. No, it's the same number. Oh. And that is the same number called twice. Well, oh. then that's good. Then you're All a double right. winner. Go ahead. All right. My mistake. Sometimes I do that stuff. Um, 81575. Bingo. A bingo. Oh, Scott. You get the children's bracelet. All right. And now for the bag. Okay, hold on. All right. Two, Everybody two, ready? Two, 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 eight. Uh -huh. One, five, seven, eight. Yeah, all right. Ah, uh, Victoria. Yeah. So, so, thank we you, got, thank, we you got thank you, thank you. got everybody here but Duncan. <laughs> 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 thank you. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Give it up for Sue Wood. Is she even... I was saying to Sue that, that she's going to make us look bad because she's the only one that did raffles and had a class. And, <laughs> and, and so, cookies. and cookies. And the Ugandan coffee. Oh, yeah. Did you like the Ugandan coffee? Yeah. 
Okay, so just a couple of things. Once again, thank you so much. You're just so educated and so gave it so much fun, Sue. Yeah, give it up. So since all of you got here after the announcements, you're going to get them again. Um, tomorrow night we have Elvis, the new movie, uh, here at the center, which is wonderful. And if you haven't seen it, um, you're just going to miss out if you don't see it because he is absolutely brilliant. And the reason is for spiritual cinema is because there is nothing more spiritual than Elvis and this story that they tell. This, this, this kid is incredible. Um, so anyway, do you can tell I kind of like the movie. It is longer than the most movies, so if you're one of those people that can't handle a movie over two hours, I would suggest not coming. Um, and if not, so a couple of things, and we have that, and then Sunday we have Rap with the Revs, and Lolita's game night, I mean game afternoon, is at 3 p.m., and speaking of baskets, we have lots of lights on in here and everything, so if anybody wants to put anything in the donation uh, basket, we would love that on your way out, or, and then you can stay and talk to uh, this wonderful, lovely Sue Wood, huh? And have a cookie. So I'm going to close this out with just a little bit of uh, gratitude because, yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, what does that have to do with, to, with tonight? Sunday? Sunday, we're doing a lot of cleaning here. We're going to start cleaning out because for some reason everybody thought that our kitchen was a place that they could bring all their stuff. And I don't know why. I guess a family family thing. But anyway, it's crowded in there. And so we're redoing all of that. So we're going to put it out on a table on Sunday and take it, not take it. And after that, it's going to go somewhere else besides there. So, yeah. So it'll be it's just stuff that keeps accumulating. And when we're going to, we want to make sure we pass it around. Yes. What time is your movie tomorrow? No, the movie is at 6. 6. 6. six. Did you enjoy my tongue out there? Wasn't that pleasantly? Uh, th that is a visual that will never go away for any of you, just so you know. Six o'clock. Yeah, we started at six because if the movie's a little longer than we do. Um, it's six to seven. Yeah, about, yeah, about two hours and 30. Yeah, two and a half. Yeah, well, we, we just kind of process. Yeah, yeah. So if you were going to go out dancing, I would suggest that you watch it on... You're leave, you can't leave until the end of it. Okay, so let's just take a moment. I'm so filled with gratitude. Gratitude for everyone in this, oh, incredible room and everyone on this incredible technology called live streaming, or as we call it, love streaming. And I am, first of all, so grateful for the opportunity to have this beautiful Sue Wood to come here and share not only a vacation, but an actual experience that we can take in our hearts and I just don't allow it just to be in this room. Let's send it to the Uganda. Let's send it to all those beautiful, beautiful, beautiful spirits and souls that, that have the audacity to smile through what we call poverty and to smile through it all, no matter what is going on, to say that the breath of life is so, so valuable. And so I am just filled with absolute positive energy from this incredible, incredible journey that we have been taking tonight. And I know that we go from here, and it is just always blessed, that our lives are blessed, that everything in our lives is truly, truly spirit-ordained. So with that, I just say thank you, thank you, thank you. Mahalo, mahalo, mahalo. We let it be, we let it so, and so it is. So it is. So it is. So it is. Yes. Let me tell you about that. That's, I'm glad you asked, and then I'll make it very quick. We, we're not going to – if any, CSL right now needs a fundraiser for CSL, yeah. that's why we – I mean, just to let you know. But we would be willing – and I, I don't think people understand that a lot of times. There's a lot – we, we give 10% of everything that comes in this center, and that's sometimes at the end of the year, 200000 and we give 10% of that back to this island and back to – so I would like to suggest that we do give 10% uh, as our one of our contributions to this wonderful, wonderful. But to have a fundraiser would be, uh, it would be defeating the purpose of us staying open so that we can continue to serve this community as well. Now, is it possible to put on a tithing um, for this much for that? No, yeah, we'll take care of it, Loya. Um, yeah, we, we'll take. 
you can do anything you want, but I would suggest that when you are starting to give off in there, that, that you remember that your home, and I usually don't do this, but I'm going to do this time. Our home is in flux. Our home, uh, we need to keep our home open. And it doesn't mean we can't give out, because we do. But it is so important, that, because we, mom and dad don't talk enough about it, that our center is, is, is really important, that we, we continue to serve it financially. And I just want to be there with that. But when I'm glad you brought that up, because I thought, what a great opportunity for us to tithe, because we're tithing to this. Absolutely. I think it would be beautiful to do that. Because they're serving us. We are a global community, by the way. We are internationally known, and we're a global community. So a lot of our support comes from off this island. They send money here to keep these this community going. So it's a beautiful thing. And the more and more we can do this, I love it because it becomes more and more global. And that's what we want. We are a destination island. Yeah, I just like to put out. Yeah, thank you, Loya. Thank you, because now we have that. I agree, and I like the idea of reoccurring. You know, to do it like for like a month. I mean, for a year or nine months. So, yes. All right. Love you guys. Good to see you. Thank you for coming out tonight. <laughs>